This is the new Solomon Sensoride 5 and for once these shoes are actually looking like I've put them through the ringer. Probably should have washed it though before I went on camera. Let's talk about it. Solomon is back with their fifth version of the Sense Ride. Now the Sense Ride is a hugely popular trail shoe. It's kind of a mixed terrain trail shoe. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. But ultimately it's very versatile. And most likely this is a shoe that you're gonna get if you do pretty much any trail running. There are a few exceptions, but for most of us, the day-to-day -day runs that we do on the trails, the Sense Ride 5 is going to be the one that you're gonna reach for. That's gonna be the most comfortable. That's gonna be able to run on the most wide range of trails. I guess that's why it's in the mixed terrain category. So I've been using this shoe for, I don't know, a little over a month, five weeks maybe before I'm making this review. And I've been pretty happy with it because it has made me run on more trails than I usually would. Of course, usually the vast majority of shoes that I test are road shoes, but having this bad boy in the stable has made me want to go out and run more trails. And it's it's been a lot of fun. But let's talk about the shoe. Let's talk about how it fits. Let's talk about what Solomon has done to update this shoe over the Sense Ride 4. Then let's talk about rides. So as usual, let's start at the top. Let's work our way down. You can see right around here, this heel collar, this heel collar is actually very padded. It's almost like, it's almost like a daily trainer, which definitely contributed to a good step in feel, good comfort. You know, when you're on the trails and your feet get a little wobbly as you're going over the mixed terrain, it's nice having this padding on the side just to keep my ankle in place, keep everything padded. It felt very good. The heel counter isn't super rigid. There isn't something really rigid inside, but it's definitely rigid enough to give a nice feeling that your heel is locked into place and they didn't have any heel slip. We have a nice pull tab there, but I can't actually say that I've used it. In fact, this is the first time I've actually put my finger in it, but it's a good idea to have one. The upper is a lovely engineered mesh and Solomon is actually changing the weave depending on where it is on the shoe because you need different weaves and different areas. Obviously around the back, we don't need a lot of breathing there in the back, so it's a lot tighter. And coming around the front, we can see there is more pronounced holes to get ventilation right here in the toe box and around the side. That's where I want my feet to breathe when I'm out out there on the trails. Now it wouldn't be a Solomon shoe if they didn't have their Sensi Fit system and basically you can see these lines kind of running up the side on both the medial and the lateral side and I really like this part of Solomon shoes because it kind of it cradles the foot from the midsole all the way up to the lacing system so when you tighten down those laces you get a super snug fit right across your midfoot because it pulls the entire upper from the midsole all the way around your foot. It feels really good which especially on a trail shoe you really want that good lockdown. You want those shoes to be firmly attached to your feet. I mean, I guess you want that in all cases, but it seems like you especially want that when you're running in a trail shoe. Solomon claims that this SensiFit system gives you a virtually customized fit right around your foot. When you tighten these laces, this SensiFit system kind of wraps around your foot and however your foot is shaped, the midfoot lockdown is gonna wrap around that. Moving on to the laces, we are using speed laces. And I gotta tell you, it's been several years since I've used speed laces, but these work astoundingly well. It is very easy to just cinch this cord pull down this little pull tab to lock it into place. And it does an amazing job of locking down everything across the top of my foot. And because the cords of the speed laces are so thin, I didn't experience any, any lace bite. The pressure seemed equally spread out all the way across the top of my foot. It just seemed like a really solid option. Now, something I wanna show you, the tongue is like a medium padded. It's not super padded like the back would suggest. This is kind of daily train-ish. The tongue is thin, not like a race tongue, but more like a workout shoe. It's kind of that medium on the thin side of a tongue, but definitely there is more than enough padding here to protect anything, any pressure from the laces from biting into the top of your foot. Even though the speed laces, they're so thin, can't imagine that you'd ever get any lace bite from speed laces. But on the top of the tongue, there is also this little pocket, kind of like a kangaroo pocket, like a little mesh pocket. Hey, remember those shoes from back in the day? I think they were called Roos and they had a little zip on the side and you could put like a key in it. I wonder if that company's still around. Anyway, this little elasticated pocket right on the top of the tongue, it's quite thin. If I put my finger in there, you can actually see right through it. But that is where you are going to stuff the rest of your laces once they're tightened down just to keep them out of the way. So they would tuck right in like that and then the laces or the XX laces aren't going to be banging around your foot. This is actually the first time I've seen this design and I'm very impressed with it. I'm surprised that more shoe companies don't have just a little bit of elasticated material on top just to tuck those laces away. That's actually one of my favorite features of this shoe. We do have some overlays coming right along the eyelet chain of the 
laces and right along the front just to give a little protection. Of course, we need a little more protection than we do on road shoes just because there is the possibility of kicking rocks and we want to protect our little tootsies inside the shoe. Moving on down to the midsole. Now, this is where Solomon has made some changes over last year's model. They are now using their energy foam and it's an EVA OBC blend. And I found it to be pretty comfortable. As far as a trail shoe goes, it was quite responsive. It was definitely soft enough. And of course, I read the specs before I put this shoe on, but Solomon is actually marketing this as kind of a do everything shoe. So you could go out for a short run on the trails. You could also run an ultra marathon in this shoe, meaning that you could be in this shoe for hours and it would still remain pretty comfortable. And after my experience, I'd agree with that. I've been on my feet for several hours in this shoe and I didn't have any shoe fatigue. My feet weren't getting tired. The shoe gave my feet a lot of support and they felt good after even being on for such a long time. Now the outsole, Solomon is using Contra Grip. It's their all-terrain Contra Grip. And this is gonna differ from some of their other versions of Contra Grip because it's built for the most wide variety of surfaces. Again, remember, this is a mixed terrain shoe. So ideally this outsole rubber is going to give you confidence whether you're running in the wet, whether it's the dry, whether it's rocky surfaces or smooth surfaces, soft surfaces or hard surfaces. This is gonna work in all situations. Well, not all situations, but we'll get to that in just a second. Solomon is also including their Profil film. And the Profil film is described by Solomon as giving your stride a more stable and smooth feel because it acts as a barrier between you and the terrain. I realize now that I have missed something pretty important that I usually talk about in the beginning of my reviews, and that's weight and stack height. The Sense Ride 5 has 30 millimeters in the heel, 22 millimeters in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. Now, just like all running shoes, weight is a pretty big part of shoes. We want our shoes to be as light as possible. And the Sense Ride 5, while not super light, we generally don't want a super light shoe on the trails because we need a little more protection. And the US Men's Size 9 tips the scale at 10 ounces or 286 grams. However, in my size, my size is a little bigger than the standard men's size nine. It's a men's size 12 and a half. And in my size, it tips the scale at 12 ounces or 341 grams. So not horrible. Okay, now let's talk about ride. And first of all, I gotta say that I have thoroughly enjoyed wearing these shoes. They are a real treat to put my foot in, especially when I'm running on the trails. Now, I don't really live around any trails. The closest trails are about four miles from my house. So a couple of the times I have taken these out and I have to run on the road in order to get to the trails. Look, I know by looking at this shoe that it's going to do pretty well on the trails around my house. Generally, we have very small rocks, sand, roots, kind of leaf litter running around these trails through the trees. And I can tell just by looking at this that it's going to excel at those type of trails. And it really does. But I did like how it felt on the road. So it is able to go on the road and run to the trails and then it really takes care of business on the trails. As a comparison, you might remember that I recently reviewed the Hoka Challenger 7 and if we look at them from the bottom, I mean, they are, they're fairly similar. Now the Solomon Sense Ride 5, these lugs look a little more aggressive to me, but they're both three and a half millimeter lugs. So they should provide about the same amount of grip. However, if we look at the Solomon lugs, we've got kind of these V-shaped lugs right in the middle at the bottom. And I guess they are supposed to give you a little more grip when you're running up Hill, you know, if they kind of latch onto something and pull you forward, I guess that's the thought behind it. In reality, they don't really work that way. But if you are going to be running on more roads, if you get into the trail, I'd probably recommend you go with a Challenger 7. These just feel a little softer when you're running on the road and then they work on the trail just as well. The Sense Ride 5, which is a little firmer running on the road. It's firmer than the Challenger 7. That's not to say it's too firm. I've run in some trail shoes on the road that are just too firm. That's not the case with the Sense Ride 5. I was, I was very happy running, I don't know, maybe seven miles on the road in this shoe before I got to the trail and I ran four or five miles around the trails and then headed home. I can't say I had any complaints about how it felt on the road, but then when I took out the Challenger again to compare them to these, the Challenger was just a little soft. So take that with a pinch of salt, depends on what you're after. However, I think that if you are buying a shoe like this, you are generally going to be using it for running on trails. So running on the roads isn't going to matter that much. Okay, so let's talk about that mixed terrain business because that's kind of a catch-all. So we know that it does work on the road. You can get to the trails. It does work on the trails around my area, but I have taken it on trails that are just a little rockier. And what I found was that the grip was absolutely fine. I'm talking about like little stones, little pebbles just kind of scattered all over amongst the sand. But I did find that when I came down and my foot came down on an actual rock, I could feel it through the midsole. Now, it's nothing to make me go, ow. It's nothing 
nothing to make me think that this was a bad shoe choice in that situation. I just realized that if you are running in very rocky terrain all the time, this probably isn't going to be the shoe that you're going to want to pick. Now, I've said it a couple of times already, but this is a mixed terrain shoe. Solomon also has shoes that are, Solomon also has shoes that are specifically designed for rocky terrain. And usually shoes that you run in rocky terrain, there is going to be a rock plate in here to give a little protection. But in my experience, I actually noticed the absence of a rock plate. But with a rock plate, comes, I don't know, a little more weight, maybe a little more bulk. So it's not to take anything away from this shoe. I, my foot felt protected when I was running in it until I stepped directly onto a rock. Then I kind of felt it. But other than that, when I'm running up and down trails, up and down the hills, scrambling up some sandy inclines, my foot felt protected. I felt like I had a lot of grip. And all in all, it was a, a very good experience. Now I've got to say, I like how this shoe looks. I like how it feels on my foot. And I like the amount of grip that I have. And actually running in the shoe kind of made me feel like more of a trail runner. Now that means nothing to anybody. That isn't a, a good measure of how a shoe fits, how it feels, other than to me. And it made me feel like I was a pretty badass trail runner. So if that's something you look for in a shoe, the Sensoride 5 is definitely one to consider. Now, if you're just looking for a good mixed terrain trail shoe, I think the Sensoride 5 is also something that you're gonna need to consider. And, and it's only 140 US dollars. So it is definitely more on the affordable end of the spectrum of running shoes. All right guys, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what trail shoe you generally go out in. Have you run in Solomon shoes? Have you run in the Sensoride 4? three or any of the previous version of the shoes. If you have, let me know your experience in the comments. Also, if you have got to this point in the video, first of all, thank you very much. Second of all, why don't you drop that spool of thread emoji in the comments so I know that you've made it all the way to the end of the video. And I struggled to come up with something, an emoji that actually fits this shoe. These speed laces are super thin, like a piece of string. I don't know, it's a stretch, but it is what it is. Guys, thanks for staying all the way to the end of this video. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.